You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Alabama Crimson Tide, looking to sweep Alabama on the season. We're going to talk about the Alabama offense. We're going to talk about the Alabama defense, and then we're going to give some final thoughts in a final score here. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everybody that we are free and available on all platforms. Let's go ahead and get into it. The Alabama offense. So last time these two teams faced off in Tuscaloosa, it was a defensive affair and you could almost not even really call it that. It was just a poor offensive affair. Uh, Neither team could really knock down any shot regardless of whether or not it was open. Uh, It was a 66 to 55 victory for the Wildcats. The Alabama offense though normally plays better than 55 points. Uh, They average 80.4 points per game right now, which is good for third in the SEC. The SEC is known to be a little bit of an offensive league. I believe 11 or 12 of the teams in the SEC score more than the national average. So points are scored in the SEC. So props to Alabama uh, for still uh, scoring over 80 a game, even though the shooting numbers for every team in the Southeastern Conference has kind of dipped a little bit now that conference play is is getting close uh, to its end. Alabama's pace of play has actually ramped up since the last time we faced off against them. They were 18th nationally in adjusted tempo whenever we played them, and now they're 14th nationally in adjusted tempo. So something Alabama has elected to do is play a little bit quicker here as conference play has continued along. They still put up a lot of shots, over 63 field goal attempts per game. They take a lot of threes, somewhere between 29 or 30 uh, a game, good for first in the SEC in that category, and we saw last time Alabama put up 33s against the Wildcats, but they didn't really make a ton. In fact, it was their worst shooting performance of the season. They shot 3 of 30 from downtown. I don't expect that to happen again uh, today. They get to the line uh, quite a bit, actually. They're fourth in the SEC in free throw attempts uh, per game, and you go back and you watch the Kentucky game, something that was really important for this Kentucky defense against this Alabama offense was getting back in transition. Alabama wanted to push the pace so badly uh, in this game last time, but they were not able to because Kentucky was getting back on defense and they were contesting shots. Stylistically, we talked about this last time we previewed the Alabama. Nate Oates likes to run five out or four uh, four out, one in motion uh, offense. It's focused on dribble, dribble drives and kickouts. We saw this a lot last season when the Alabama Crimson Tide made it to the Sweet 16. The spacing is really important for this offense. Nate Oates really knows what he's doing uh, with this spacing on the floor. And this year... You'll probably hear a lot of different analysts talk about this. The transition with the offense that Nate Oates likes to run is they're not necessarily focused on making the three, at least from an efficiency standpoint. Their best baskets come inside the paint or two-point jumpers. They really, really, are really, really, really good at making twos, even though they take a ton of threes. So stylistically, Oates has kind of shifted his philosophy with the personnel that he has, instead of trying to make the three at a high clip, he's now going to make the two at a high clip, even though he's taking a ton of threes still. The offense handles high ball pressure well, uh, and we we kind of saw this uh, against Kentucky. It's a great offense if you're knocking down your threes. Unfortunately, Alabama is not. They would be scoring almost 90 a game if they were. Um, But but again, not very efficient from beyond the three-point line. Something 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 uh, interesting to note here: uh, Kentucky, or excuse me, Alabama is 281st nationally in percentage of points that come from two. So the percentage of points that they get per game uh, from inside the arc is not very high at all. Uh, but they shoot an excellent clip, like I mentioned a second ago. 56.8 percent from two is what Alabama shoots. That's 11th nationally. So maybe if they stopped shooting as many threes as they were or as they are, they would become a more efficient offense. Or if they knock down the threes at a little bit of a higher clip, they would be virtually unstoppable. Unfortunately, I don't necessarily think that, you know, this late into the season, we're going to see them all of a sudden start jacking up and knocking down threes and at an incredibly high rate. I think they just kind of are what they are right now. And no, I don't think they're three of 30. I don't think that's, their standard, 
Um, but it, but again, it's not what it was last season for the Crimson Tide. They averaged 14 and a half assists per game, which is good for fifth in the SEC. Most of their offensive numbers are are above average in the Southeastern Conference, uh, except for their three point shooting. They shoot 30.8 percent from three, which is 12th in the SEC. So two spots away from last. Again, if they would just focus on the two a little bit more or knock down their threes a little bit, this offense would be very, very, very good. Unfortunately, uh, it's not. They shoot 44.6% from the field, which is fourth in the SEC. They shoot 72% from the free throw line, which is seventh in the SEC. And they actually grab quite a few boards. They grab 40.3 rebounds per game, which is good for third in the SEC. So overall, I think this is a good offense that Nate Oates has. We talked about this last time. I respect their offense. I respect what Nate Oates likes to do uh, with his personnel. they got some really, really good guards. Let's go ahead and get to some of the key contributors here. We talked about two of these guys last time, and then I've got a new key contributor here for you. So Jaden Shackelford, we talked about him Last time we talked about the Tide. Averages 17.1 points per game, five and a half rebounds per game. He's he's the leading scorer on this team, one of the best scorers in the SEC. He's not known as a distributor, but he averages over three, or excuse me, eight three-point attempts per game. Um, So he's jacking up a lot of threes. He's the primary shooting guard on this team, uh, but he only scored six points versus Kentucky. I do not expect him to have another bad outing against the Wildcats. Now, I don't expect him to score 20, um, but I don't expect him to get held to six points because, again, it was kind of an anomaly what Alabama did from beyond the arc uh, against the Wildcats last time they played. Javon Quinterly, 14.2 points per game, 3.2 rebounds per game, and 4.5 and assists per game. Quinterly is the primary point guard for this team. Unfortunately, he does not shoot very well, so you would think that with the amount of points per game he gets, 14.2, Uh, And him not shooting well, he's probably put up a lot of shots, and he actually has put up 144 three-point attempts so far this season, and he's only shooting 25% uh, from three-point land, which is just really, really not good. But again, Alabama is kind of what they are right now. They aren't a very good three-point shooting team. Quinterly had seven points versus Kentucky uh, last game, and this is something that I think is going to be very important this game. While the front court matchup is going to be interesting, and we'll actually get to that in just a second, but... I think that the more important issue in this game is how do Alabama's guards respond after being held in check against the Wildcats last game? Six points and seven points from from Shackelford and and Quinterly is not going to happen again. At least I don't believe it's going to happen again. So how do they adjust? I'm curious to see what that looks like in this game. Final key contributor here. I did not have him on our key contributors last time. Uh, These two teams faced off. Charles Bediaco. 6.7 6.7 points per game, 4.3 rebounds per game. He averages over one and a half blocks for con- per contest as well. He's one of the primary front court players on this team. Does not play a ton of minutes usually. He gets somewhere between 15 and 20 uh, from what I could tell. Uh, but he played 21 minutes against the Wildcats last time, had 12 points, eight rebounds, one block, one steal, made all four of his field goal attempts, uh, and played relatively well against Oscar Shibwe. And the reason that I put him here as a key contributor offensively, he was incredibly efficient. Do Does Alabama elect to go to him again uh, in this game? And then also, he played very well against Oscar Shibwe. How does Oscar respond in this game? There's going to be a lot of, I think there's going to be a lot of differences that we see in this matchup as opposed to what we saw against Alabama the first go-round. I don't expect it to be as low scoring. I expect Alabama's offense to be a little bit little bit better. And that's not to say that Kentucky's defense is going to get worse the second time around. It's just that that's what Alabama does. They score 80 a game. I would expect them to kind of get back to their average a little bit in this contest, even though it is in Rupp, even though it's on the road. I think the Crimson Tide are going to have a relatively decent offensive day. It's not going to be great, though. All right, in just a second, we're going to talk about the Alabama defense, which played very well. Uh, against the Wildcats last go around, but they're not necessarily consistent. We're going to talk about what they may do uh, against the Wildcats this second game in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season, and it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and 
action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, continuing along here on the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky. This week, by the way, started out just incredibly slow. It's crazy that we're already here on Friday getting to preview this game against Alabama. Week has flown by uh, all of a sudden. All right, the Alabama defense. Strong as wet cardboard is the way that I described them before they played the Wildcats, and then they held Kentucky to 66 points. And we noted uh, last time uh, we previewed Alabama that there was no consistency as to how Alabama played defensively, whether it be a really efficient offensive team, whether it be a terrible team uh, efficiency-wise. They just kind of played the way they play the way that they play. They're off, they're on. The question, I think, again, this time around is how are they going to play against Kentucky again? How are they going to adjust? There's going to be a lot of adjustments this go around, I think. We're not going to see the same game again. We're not going to see the same game again. Although I will say Alabama gives up 77.3 points per game, or excuse me, 73.5 points per game uh, in conference play. They simply have not been able to stop teams at times in conference play. And I'm just curious to see, do we see a meltdown this go around? Do we see them fall apart again? Or do we see them clamp down and play really hard against the Wildcats like they did in Tuscaloosa again? I don't know. I I genuinely don't know because it it was, was, I didn't really expect them to clamp us the first go round. I don't expect them to be able to do it Rupp Arena, but genuinely I, I don't know. This team's on, this team's off. They are not consistent. There is not a pattern to way that they play on the defensive side of the ball. We can just kind of look at their overall numbers and look what they did last game and just kind of maybe assume some things, but genuinely I don't think that we can get a clear answer until these two teams actually take the court. It was a pretty balanced offensive attack from Kentucky last game, though. Five Wildcats scored in double figures. Keon Brooks, Oscar Shibway, Kellen Grady, Ty Ty Washington led the team with 15, and then Damian Collins uh, came off the bench and had 10 points. Do we see more Damian Collins in this game? Uh, I think one of the the more important questions, along with how does Alabama's backcourt respond, is how does Alabama elect to defend Kentucky's front court because they played very well against Kentucky's front court last time and Collins had to step in and provide those 10 points but Alabama did a great job against Oscar Shibway can they do it again Shibway had 10 points 15 rebounds and was 4 of 13 from the field now I know that it's really difficult to criticize a player that averages over a double double and whenever I say averages over a double double I mean by like three or four rebounds and four or five points um, but but he's, he's Oscar Shibway set the bar so high, so consistently that whenever he goes four of thirteen from the field, you have to look and at least say, okay, there was a problem here. What was it? Because there's been a pattern with Oscar Shibway and his poor, poor performances, and we've talked about it two or three times here recently on the show. It's against height and length and talent. When you face off against a team that has a a tall uh, front court that is talented, they have to be both, then Oscar Shibway has the ability to struggle. Now, he is going to get his rebounds. He's going to get his offensive rebounds. He's going to get to the free throw line a little bit. But he's not going to shoot at a very high clip. He's also going to turn the ball over a few times. He had three turnovers in this game against Alabama last time. How does Charles Bediaco, how does Juwan, Juwan Gary, how does Noah Gurley, all the Alabama's front court players, how do they handle Oscar Shibwe and Damian Collins? Do we see Collins a little bit more in this game? We'll just have to find out. Alabama's 66th in defensive efficiency. They don't really create turnovers, even though they had 15 versus Kentucky. They don't really grab offensive rebounds overall, even though they had 12 versus Kentucky and Kentucky had nine. And teams shoot 49% from two against them. And Kentucky shot 40.8% from two. So a lot of weird things happened in this game last time. A lot of things offensively that Kentucky doesn't normally do. And then a lot of things that Alabama normally doesn't do defensively. It was just an odd matchup. And again, I go back to, for what feels like the millionth time on this episode, I just don't think we're going to see the same thing again. I don't think we're going to see 66 to 55. I think we're going to see a little bit of a higher scoring game. And it's not to say that Kentucky's defense is bad or Alabama's offense is, is, is terrible and they're, they're, they're going to fall apart again. I'm not trying to say one thing or another negatively about these two teams. I think we're just going to see them get closer to their averages in this matchup. At least that's, it's just what I, would, what I would assume after they make some adjustments. And I believe that these two teams are, are making adjustments. All right, we're going to talk about some final thoughts here. Some more questions about this matchup. Uh, the SEC regular season winding down. 
Only got a few games left. I predicted early or earlier, I, I think it was last week actually, predicted that, that Kentucky would win the regular season uh, SEC title. And I think that's still possible, but they got to win games like this. And I think this is going to be an interesting game. So we're going to talk about some final thoughts here in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Built Bar. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right, and it's all thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not even really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They are fluffy, they are marshmallowy, and they are not just a protein bar, they are a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And these things are going to be your new favorite. Low calorie, high protein. You need to replace your candy bars with these. They are simply better. And Built has so many different flavors for both Built Bars and Puffs. They've got mint brownie, coconut almond, salted caramel. They've got just coconut. And this month, they have an awesome flavor, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious. And new flavors are coming out all the time. If Built thinks a flavor might be good, they will make it. It will be delicious and it will also be good for you. You can go to built.com right now and you can use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, wrapping up the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl here with you. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. If you're watching on YouTube, this would be the time now. Go ahead and drop your final score predictions in the comments below. If you're listening on podcast format, you can go to our socials. You can follow me on Twitter at Locked On UK. If you want to drop a final score, if you want to drop a thought about the game, go ahead and do it. All right, some final thoughts here on Kentucky versus Alabama. So last time these two teams played, I feel like I've said that a million times on this episode, Alabama was one of the quickest games Kentucky has played this season in terms of pace. They were flying up and down the court. There were also a lot of turnovers as a result of that. In fact, there were 30 combined turnovers between these two teams, and there were a lot of points off of turnovers. There were 31 points combined off of turnovers. Kentucky had 17, Alabama had 14. Will we see sloppy play again, or will Kentucky elect to maybe slow things down a little bit, or will Alabama elect to slow things down a little bit? We'll just have to see. Again, I don't know the answer to that question because it was kind of an anomaly to begin with, this game. And so I just, I think that we aren't going, going to see as many turnovers, I assume. And I think we're going to see a relatively similar pace of play. But again, without Ty Ty Washington, I just wonder how this team off, operates offensively with Davion Mintz at the point. Does he like to run or with severe Wheeler at the point, depending, depending on which one's in? Do they want to run as much as the team did with Washington on the floor? Just going to have to see. And, and also something I think that, that is interesting and worthy of note, if these teams are really thinking about, thinking about making adjustments, something to note is while they did try and run in this game, offensively, neither of these two teams were very efficient. Kentucky had 66 points and a bunch of turnovers. Alabama had 55 points, a ton of turnovers, and couldn't, couldn't knock down a three to save their lives. So maybe they adjust. Maybe they slow down. Maybe they have some half-court things working, working in this game for them. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, the four parameters here for Kentucky basketball wins. I say I, I go through go over these for particularly for games on the road, but we'll go over them here and we'll just talk about what happened last game. Can Kentucky, number one, shoot the ball well in this game? It's one of the four things they have to do to win. The fact that teams shoot 49% from two on Alabama indicates that Kentucky should have some success inside. We talked about this last time. Of course, Kentucky finished the game shooting a little over 40% from, from two. And so I just wonder, will that happen again? No, I think, they, I think they do end up having a little bit of success. I think they do shoot the ball well. The three is, is interesting um, because Alabama opponents uh, usually shoot, I believe it's 32% from three. So I think that Kentucky will have success inside, and then I'm interested to see what happens from beyond the arc. Can Kentucky have decent shot selection? Look, any night Kentucky can have decent shot selection. It's just the fact of whether or not whether or not they actually make those decisions. They're capable of making those decisions. They have the freedom to make those decisions. It's just that will Alabama cause havoc? Will it throw Kentucky off mentally? Will the Wildcats start making dumb decisions, or can they stay in control of themselves 
and make wise decisions on the offensive end. Last time we saw Kentucky take the court, they made some terrible decisions shooting the basketball. You have to see a little bit more discipline today, or tomorrow, excuse me. Can the Wildcats play well in transition, both offensively and defensively? 16 fast break points for Kentucky last game against Alabama, and Alabama only had four fast break points. Again, I'm just curious to see if these two two teams actually slow things down a little bit based on the results from the prior matchup. But I will say, yes, Kentucky at home should be able to do what they need to do offensively in the transition game to get it done. And then I'll I'll also say that I, I believe they should be able to get back like they did last game and hamper Alabama from really running like they want to. And then final parameter here, can the Wildcats protect the rim? Well, they shot awfully, Alabama did last time. Shot 28.1% from the floor. But Alabama's still efficient at the rim overall. Again, it was such an anomaly that came. And it's and it's not to knock on Kentucky. It's like, oh, well, they're not actually as good of a defense as those numbers indicate. Again, it was just, it was simply an anomaly. Like, Kentucky still has a very good defense. They're just not that good, right? They're not 28.1% good uh, on every single night. So I think Alabama will make some more shots at the rim but I don't think it's going to be insane. I don't think it's going to be enough to give Alabama the win. That brings me to my final score prediction. My final score prediction, uh, prediction: Kentucky 79, Alabama 73. That's my final score prediction. I think Cats win by six. I think it's a little bit of a back-and-forth game at different points, but Wildcats win it by six at home. If you've got a final score prediction, if you think differently, if you think no, we're going to see a defensive affair again. If you think no... We're going to see a blowout. If you think, no, Alabama's getting the upset, whatever you think about this game, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter again at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Stahl underscore. And you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. Again, any questions, comments, concerns about this game, about anything Kentucky related, you can leave it on the socials, leave it in the comments. I will see you all on Monday. Have a great day, everybody. And God bless.